there's a lot of things we obviously have to design and take into account for a spacecraft. We can't just take a phone and throw it up in space. So how does it actually affect the building? Is it really the economics, the cost of these things? Yes, and when we talked about, for rocket launch, yes. we talked about how there was this incredibly high price per kilogram until very recently when yes. SpaceX has brought the price down by a huge factor. And I'm afraid probably something very similar has happened to spacecraft, mm. that the prices were absolutely insane. James Webb Space Telescope is, at the point of launch, probably about 10 billion US dollars. Yeah, that's probably about right. But again, point of launch is the critical thing. We'll talk yes. about that in a second. Uh, and the, the the latest two Mars rovers, Curiosity and Perseverance, they're about two, three, two, bil yeah. two billion each. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is a lot of money. Yeah. Um, so for, a, a comparison has been done for the Hubble Space Telescope. And it's an awesome telescope. We both love yes. it very much. Yes. But it was about $5 billion to launch another $15 billion since then in terms of servicing missions and maintaining it. Yeah. Um, which is about a hundred times more than a big ground-based telescope. Which we also love, right? Yes. Um, and in fact, this telescope mirror is actually bigger than the Hubble Space yeah, Telescope Yes, so that's mirror. the Anglo-Australian telescope, and that's a 3.9 metre as opposed to a 2.3 metre mirror. Now, Hubble is definitely better. Yeah. It produces about 15 times more citations to publications, yep. but it costs a hundred times more. So in terms of dollars per high-impact publication, yeah. it's actually quite poor. And if I had to name the, the biggest astronomy breakthroughs of the last, since I've been an astronomer, probably be things like dark energy and exoplanets, they were discovered from the ground, not from space. Mm. Um, so it's not, why is it so expensive? I mean, clearly it's going yeah. to be more expensive in space. Yeah. But why is it A hundred so times more. Yeah, I guess that's yeah. the question. Um, but there's a bunch of reasons, yeah. much like we talked about for spacecraft. One is this, the trade-off. I mean, if, yeah. if it's going to cost you $500 million to launch it, you don't want to launch something cheap you want to launch something that can do everything right exactly that's right and it's and got to be very reliable because you don't want to spend 500 million dollars launching something that it breaks 10 minutes later and that's kind of what we saw with the james webb space telescope right it it was going to be this big expensive telescope so they actually had to build it almost in more complexity to do more to get their value and the, the circle of launching was yeah. for years of development and then if you're going to launch a $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope, you want a really reliable rocket to launch it yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. Um, which means you're going to check everything 500 times, um, and it makes the launch even more expensive, so there's even more of yes. an incentive. So there's a vicious cycle, the two trading off each other. There's also all the uh, um, the usual spending is the point, yeah, rather, yeah. not the bug. Yep. Uh, again, the building satellites is good money for whichever company gets it, or yes. university that gets it. They, they, they tend to be one-off bespoke things. Yeah, yeah. You're not mass producing them. Yeah. If you only ever built one Toyota Corolla, had to spend it, all the development costs, I'm sure it cost a lot of money to develop a Toyota Corolla. If you only ever build one, that's going to be a very expensive car. But because they built tens of thousands or millions of these things, the cost per car becomes much lower. Again, and that's not too different than what we've talked about before in the actual launching of rockets again with SpaceX. Yep. Yeah. So building bespoke one-off things yeah. when you've got no incentive to bring the price down. And again, there's a low tolerance yeah. of failure. Uh, that uh, a spacecraft that gets launched on this incredibly expensive mission and then breaks down, not a good look, you're not going to get any more contracts. That's right, but if you build 100,000 computers and 10 of them fail, no one's going to notice the 10, you just build another one to replace it, not the cost there. Yeah. So in fact, NASA for a while back in the 1990s, yeah. and it's then directed Dan Golden, decided they were going to go with a cheaper, faster, better program. The idea was that at that point, a typical space mission would cost a billion year, a billion dollars and take 20 years between first plan to launch. I mean, well, Hubble started in 76, I think it was, and didn't take off till 95? That's right. We James was... Webb was about 30 years? Yeah, so, um, and this meant, for example, that the people who were designing it to beginning are generally retired before it gets That's launched. Right. So you've got a steady turnover of people, yeah. and it's... Um, and the reason you're doing this is you definitely don't want it to fail, just like yeah. rockets. Yeah. It's got to work first time, because you're only going to get one time. It's a bespoke one-off. That's right. But that makes it very expensive, exactly. because everything you launch has to be space certified. Yes. You want to make sure that every component on it has been launched before and has been rigorously tested and documented. And so you have a huge amount of money spent on testing that this works with that and that works with the other and design and, and, reviews and committee meetings. Exactly. And, and that, you know, one of the underlying factors is there are thousands of people that go into that, right? And people were require money to be paid. Yeah, and so the idea was to go with a 95% success rate, which is okay. more or less what NASA was achieving for its science missions. Yep. Um, but what the Cheaper, Faster, Better program decided was that maybe instead of spending 10 years and a billion dollars, you can spend two years and a hundred million dollars and just have a 80% success rate. Mm -hmm. 
So you're going to lose more. But you may get... But it's 10 times cheaper. That's right. And you'll be quicker at getting the science, which actually can then... Which means it'll be more yes. up to date. That's right. And you can, for example, have graduate students whose thesis is to launch a rocket, <laughs> as opposed to, to design one screw on a rocket that will take 20 years and you'll never even see. Yep. Um, and it actually worked quite well. A number of yes. good missions worked on it. That's right. And it was, was achieving about 80% yep. success rate. But they had three or four failures in a row, yeah, and then yeah, the politician yeah. shut it down. It was, yeah. The uh, optics was bad. So it's... Um, Again, it's politics coming in yeah. here. It, if things fail too often, people think you're in competition. You don't, even though those things cost 10 times less. Yeah. If it's 10 times less and half of them fail, you're still ahead. Yeah, exactly, that's right. But that try turning out to a politician. <laughs> <laughs> so, and of course, in fact, everything has to be specified yeah. to work in space and the paperwork. For every tonne of payload launched from Cape Canaveral, there's 10 tonnes of paperwork delivered. So these are all problems. What can you do about it? Um, yeah. Well, one possibility is these new small satellites we're talking about, yep. the CubeSats. Because they cost little, you can actually, for example, just put a silicon chip you buy. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, no big deal. That's right. And so this way you can actually try a bunch of things and launch them quickly and cheaply and repeatedly and see what works, rather than having to make sure that it's been launched by someone else before That's right. the same configuration. And in fact, I mean, so many of the satellites we see now launch, almost, sometimes 40% of them are just technology demonstrator satellites for that exact reason. Because you may think, why are you spending a million dollars on one? Well, it's not a hundred million dollars to wait 10 years to do it. That's right. The other thing is mass production. Yeah. This is what SpaceX is working at for its Starlink. The idea is instead of making one, you're making 10,000 of them, and then you get the same economies of scale you get with your Toyota cars. Exactly. And then therefore you can, your, your failure rates, all those sorts of things, budget it and make it overall cheaper. Yes, again, if you're designing Toyotas, you'll see that the, the, the 2003 Corolla tended to have a timing belt failure, so we make the timing belt better on the next one. Exactly. Like if you're building thousands That's of right. these things, you can see, oh, they tend to fail their ion drive or their gyroscope. We need to improve that. And over time, you get an extremely reliable spacecraft in a way you can't get by just this one-off expensive bespoke things.